perfect. Okay, listen, thank you very much. And thank you for everybody taking your time, their time to listen to the respective presentations tonight. I'm Carl Frail. I'm the executive chairman uh, and co-founder of Open Orphan PLC. That's a disclaimer, uh, always worth having and worth looking at because the small print can kill in these little companies. Um, and here we are. Um, what have we got? For anybody who doesn't know what Open Orphan is, um, we're probably one of the faster growing um, small AIM companies. We IPO'd in June last year and we acquired the company in the top right hand side, Van Life Science PLC. It's an integrated drug development consultancy. It had troubles. Uh, I'll tell you more about that in a minute, but we think we fixed it. And then we did the best deal of my life, uh, HV1 in London, we acquired, which was then uh, the world leader in the testing of vaccines and antivirals. It was a, a lost sheep. The market had lost interest in it, and nobody wanted to know about it last year. It did have a couple hundred million value a couple hundred million valuation some years ago and it collapsed to seven million last November, December when we came knocking. Uh, we thought we were very generous. We gave a 40% premium and we acquired it for 30, uh, 13 million in January. Uh, two million of that was actually cash. Uh, it came with cash. We gave all equity. And now three months later, uh, everybody seems to know what vaccines and everybody seems that antivirals, are. even my 10 year old child seems to know what antivirals were. So but basically it's wonderful. We've been really lucky. We've been busy working it. So what have we created? It's really the strap at the top. We have now created Open Orphan PLC. It's a unique European niche, means small, but profitable, uh, or soon to be profitable, I'd say. CRO, which is really a clinical research organization. In other words, we test drugs on behalf of big pharma. And we're unique. This is a little East London, Whitechapel based company, HV, but we bought. But guess what? They are the world leaders in running trials to test vaccines and antivirals. And it's not a nice space to be in the moment. I know we're all, the whole world, ourselves included, is having the toughest two months of our life. We're all locked up. Uh, but only the company now that at least can test the vaccines, we've got a lot of profile into what's going on. So it gives us great comfort. There is a uh, hundred. COVID-19 vaccines in different stages of development, and even more COVID-19 antivirals. We're in the lucky position seeing a lot of them, and we're even lucky, more lucky position. We're getting paid to test quite a lot of these things. What else is an open orphan? Bottom right-hand side, we have a genomic uh, database, and in, in my next presentation, hopefully in a week or 10 days, we'll have this all refreshed. There'll be a little arrow, and that'll be filled with data from HVIVO. HVIVO have been doing clinical trials, testing antivirals and vaccines for nearly 30 years, and they have a huge amount of uh, data, information about the progression, and we're going to load that data up in our genomic health database. With Open Orphan, uh, and people are amazing what you get when you acquire these companies. Um, with Venn, we got didn't get we got a lot of surprises, not many in the upside, but we have it fixed. It was losing money. We're turning that around. HVIVO came with a lot of losses, but it came with a lot of surprises. And the bottom left-hand corner there, where you'll see where some of the interesting surprises are. We ended up at a 49, deck is wrong, we've got another 1% in recent weeks, a 49% stake in Immutex. And what is Immutex? Immutex is a universal, phase three ready, uh, influenza vaccine. It also has, it says wrong here, phase one is now completed, and, a, a, and it's phase two ready. And the results that mosquito saliva vaccine will be published in the coming weeks in the Lancet. So we still sort of squeezing our arm and pricking our arm, saying, well, do we actually acquire this Immutex company? We did. We also found in the basement of HVIVO, I think people kind of forgot it was there, a repurposed immune influenza immune modulator. And it appears to have COVID-19 uh, purposes as well. Uh, so we've a lot of COVID action. Uh, the last thing that I'm really excited to say is not on this deck, uh, it only came out earlier this week and we haven't got around to update it, is uh, we have all seen in Sky News and BBC today David Rush uh, saying they now can do 100% uh, accuracy of antibody tests. Well, if anyone's read The Guardian on Sunday uh, and the FT last week said there's only two companies in the world that can give 100% accuracy to antibody testing, which we all know is very important. One was Rush, but guess what? Second was quotient. And on Monday of this week, we were made the proud. We're their exclusive UK distributors. 
So our coaching machines arrived in this week. And in 10 days time, we're gonna be offering the exact same service as the Rush machines that are all over the press today. And if you look at our RNS, it was published in London on Monday under Open Orphan. It was published in NASDAQ under Cotion, Q-O-T-I-A-N-T Inc. And you'll see, we're also saying 100% uh, accuracy. So that's an exciting place for a tiny little company called Open Orphan to have. We're really looking forward to rolling those tests out to the UK population because we all know the UK lags badly in antibody testing. But between ourselves and Rush, I think we're going to catch up very fast. So I think that's enough said in that slide, other than this was Venn Life Science, a company with a market cap of 1 million and a share price of 2p uh, December 12 months ago. And here we are today. Um, this week we were trying to calm the share price down. We didn't want it rocketing through the roof. So that's why we haven't spoken. This is one of the first times I'm speaking about our antibody testing deal that we announced on Monday. We really want to wait to have the machine installed, which is as we speak and run tests next week, and then we're open for business um, uh, through channel partners, and anybody needs an antibody testing, HVIVO's uh, facility in East London can do it uh, and immediately. It's not the little pinprick uh, Amazon kits, these are full blood draws. You need to get the blood drawn by your GP, and the GP networks will hook into us because they give 100% accuracy on uh, antibody testing one has to unfortunately do a blood draw through the GP. That's the difference between the pinprick blood tests and the blood draw. It means the 100%. This is basically a, a quick, the boring financials, but desperately important. Uh, we listed uh, June last year, or 549 million shares. Oops, uh, market cap a bit out of date. That was done on 31st of March, 35 million. Our share price has almost doubled since end of March. Why did that happen? Uh, when we uh, acquired HVAVO in January, we acquired four legacy shareholders, um, and two of them had been selling. And the last one stopped selling at the end of March, and our share price has almost more than doubled since then. So that that is the benefit. The remaining large shareholders, myself and our co-founders, I've put nearly half my net worth into this company, Real Cash, along with some colleagues, Brenton Buckley and others and we have about 20%. We're locked up for three years from last June, that's two and a half more years ago, so we're not going anywhere. Invesco, 9.56, and Link, former Whitford Funds, 7.3. Uh, both of these have been very good. Whitford stake, I gather, is going nowhere fast. Uh, it is uh, very much um, not selling down. Uh, we've been assured, and uh, more to be said than that, they are definitely not an overhang. And Invesco, have been very loyal uh, and they've made it clear they're here for the ride. They would like to see us do something exciting by Christmas. So unlike the two other previous legacy shareholders who have now sold out, we, we have a, a much more secure shareholder base. And likewise, news flow means our share price moves. This is probably the first time in my life on Monday uh, I ever got involved. This is my third public company I've promoted uh, that I was actually talking down the share price. We were, I was genuinely worried on Monday if our share price could go silly. Uh, we are a services company. We want to be careful. We want to grow the share price with news flow. And in the coming weeks, when we have that 100% accurate cautioned antibody test up and running, and we're delivering samples and we're delivering the service, we'll talk more about it. And we'll be happy to see share price take off. But we'd like to see share price move on serious news flow. That's about enough on the operations. We we have our main office is now in London and we have a sub-office in Paris and Breda. Um, we did have other uh, second Dutch office, German office, an Irish office, and the Belfast office. We closed a lot. When we take over these little companies, you've got to take out a lot of overheads and take out a lot of the office. We've guided the market. We will definitely be profitable in the second half. We had to hope to be profitable in Q2. Uh, with everything moving, uh, it's going to slip to the Q3, but we will certainly be profitable in the second half of this year. I'm not going to dwell on this. Look, our job here is turn them around, take out the costs. Um, our friend Trevor here, unfortunately, people say, Cahill, what happened? You lost your CEO. Uh, yeah, we did. But Trevor was the most decent, genuine gentleman. He led the HVIVO during the merger. We would call it kind of takeover. And uh, during the 20th of January, we kind of indicate to the institutional shareholders and brokers, and Trevor knew it as well, when I said that deal completed, 
uh, 20th of January, and I was going to become, the, as I said, the words, a very hands-on executive chairman, um, and Trevor was going to be our CEO. However, everybody in the market knows the AIM rules say you can have a, a full-time CEO and a non-exec chairman. But if you've been a hands-on exec chairman, you don't need a CEO. So look, Trevor's going to remain with us then in June, and give him his benefit. He has been an absolute gem to work with, and he was very integral. Despite him leaving, he was integral in bringing that cushion deals. He helped us and worked with us. So look, a nice tight team. Management team won't be getting bigger. Uh, we're just bringing up line managers, and uh, we don't believe there's any need for a CEO, we've been a fabulous CFO, we have a fabulous uh, Chief Operating Officer, and we have a wonderful uh, Chief Scientist, Andrew Catchpole, uh, who's also very involved in BD. What have we got? People say, what have we got? It's really complementary services, two small CROs, HVIVO and VEN, and really what we are, our focus now, both we're lost making, is to make sure they're profitable really soon. What's unique about the HVIVO CRO services, they're what's called cash flow positive businesses. Traditional CROs, you, you do the work and get paid afterwards, but you always get paid. HVIVO services, challenge studies, which I'll tell you about in a moment or two, but basically on signing, we signed the contract on Monday of last week for 3.4 million sterling. We get one third in cash up front. That's nice. We get milestone payments over the following three, four, five months, and they're done within between three and six months. These are not big, long, lingering contracts. They're big contracts, but they're slam bang. They're done pretty quickly. Um, we signed the contract in late February for 3.2 million. Again, one third cash up front and milestone payments have been done. The end of February one was 3.2. It's a pilot study for RSV. And we said in the RNS, there's a follow on pivotal which means it's, it's going to approval uh, for 7 million. So that one contract is 3.2 up front and a following 7 million. Uh, we've guided the market, we have more. So uh, let's watch that space. But certainly uh, we're confident there will be more news flow on more contracts. But we'll not talk about them until they get delivered. Look at that customer base, and particularly in the line of what's going on in the world with vaccines. Uh, Janssen, uh, Johnson & Johnson, Gilead, we heard a lot about those. Merck, um, Vertex, uh, Boring Ingler, lots of the major pharma companies are dealing with us. And DARPA, down the bottom right hand corner, that's the American Defense Research Organization. They've used HVIVO many times for government related vaccine work. So, look, these are amazing little companies with long term sticky relationships with big pharma, and they are cash flow positive, which is a nice place to be. And the big problem of both companies, too much overheads, too many offices, uh, and run up too many losses. So the two ways I always said you fix them, you take out some of the overheads, you lose some of the offices, but and you energize the staff. Uh, and this is amazing line managers in many of these companies. So instead of going and hiring more high flying expensive people, um, it, we're hiring internally and freeing people up. What are challenge studies? Uh, briefly, basically what challenge studies are, we test vaccines um, in our clinic and see if they work. How do you test a vaccine? Look at the diagram on the right hand side. Very simply, uh, a vaccine needs to be tested, needs to be tested in live individuals. And what's unique about us, normal clinical trial, you don't deliberately make a person sick. A normal clinical trial, you find a sick person and you test a new novel drug on them to make them well. What makes HVIVO unique, challenge studies, is you test the vaccine by day one, or man on the left of that graph, and we take 100 of them, 50% uh, of them get a placebo, and 50% get the real deal vaccine. We wait four weeks to go home and relax, let the vaccine take its effect, and at the end of the month, we bring them into the clinic. Day one or day two, we get them comfortable. It's a full quarantine level. And day two or three, we inject them with the virus. Uh, that could be flu, RSV, uh, and a whole series of other viruses. Um, day four, he gets sick, or she, cough, cold, and we watch them, we keep them in bed, we monitor them closely, and they never get particularly ill. But we then, and then within end of the 10 days, they're fully well, and hearty and we send them home and 
they get £3,500 for the pleasure of being locked up with unlimited TV, good food, and at the worst, they get a runny nose and a sore head, a mild version of flu. But during that period, we then can see the 50% who got the placebo, uh, did they get sicker than the 50% who got the vaccine? Really simple. Again, it's amazing. This is not done anywhere in the world bar in um, HVO's offices in East London. So that's a challenge study. The exciting part is, uh, the 7th of March, we said we'd be ballsy, and we'd launch the world's first coronavirus challenge study. So the real excitement about it is in the months ahead. Uh, on that announcement, we virtually, every large vaccine manufacturer is doing COVID came to us and said, can you test our vaccine? Because the beauty of this, it's called a phase 2B trial. It lasts three months, and because the, the subjects all are in the clinic, we can tell a vaccine company after two months, does your vaccine work, yes or no? So in the coming weeks and months, you'll hear an awful lot more about what we're doing. Uh, we've announced we're going to do a coronavirus uh, seasonal challenge study model, and we're actively looking, called the real deal, going with a COVID-19 attenuated virus challenge study model. If we can, those virus models up and running, uh, we could be dealing with an awful lot of the current uh, vaccines for COVID-19 that need to be tested. Uh, it does shorten the time frame by two to three years of the normal vaccine development. I don't want to dwell too much on that, but that's a really exciting uh, revenue stream for us. We did it, or we do it, in the 24-bed quarantine. Um, the previous shareholders and management spent 24, 25 million on the clinic. They spent 10 million in the viral laboratory. If they hadn't spent that money in the viral laboratory, we would not have got the Cochin deal this week. Uh, Cochin did it was because, look at that fully robotic uh, diagnostic machine on the top left-hand side of the laboratory one. Um, it was money well spent. We didn't pay for it. We say there was 110, to be exact, 113 invested in HVIVO in the last seven years, and we've acquired some lovely assets. They also have spent in the region of 25 million developing their eight challenge study models that they can do. Immutex, this is the lottery card I talk about, and hopefully uh, over the next two or three months, what we're going to do, this is basically the traditional HVIVO spent a lot of money, time and effort on being a biotech. They were doing challenge study services, but they were developing their own drugs, and that's why it lost an awful lot of money. But along the way, they now have 49% of Immutex, which I said already, has both a universal flu vaccine and a mosquito vaccine, so that's pretty exciting. Bottom right hand corner, they have the repurposed immune modulator. Our plan would be this summer, if we find an appropriate NASDAQ listed small cap with cash, we'll vend 100% with, uh, we've already had discussions with our 51% shareholder, Seek Group, and they're quite excited. Uh, they've struggled to find funding for this company, and that's my core skill. So we're going to vend 100%, our 48, well, it's actually 49, and the Seek Group's 51. So the two combined, 100%, we're going to a NASDAQ listed vehicle, and every open orphan shareholder will get a dividend, or we'll get a share. It'll be done as a dividend species, share for share. If you open, own an open open share, you will in turn now, if we can pull it off, it's not guaranteed, the plan is a share in that public vehicle. So hopefully end of the summer, all our shareholders, including myself, will have two share certs, one at Open Orphan PLC, and one in what we would call the Immutex NASDAQ PLC. This is the genomic database. This has to be updated as well. I think over the coming week, we will refresh all our decks because uh, we're at a fabulous inflection point, uh, and this will have a lot of the uh, HVIVO data, which means rather than wait until year end, we'll be open for business end of the summer, and we'll start on a subscription basis, getting pharma companies access to that database. I'm not going to go into the higher value. That's basically, we've got chunky contracts. We're announcing three to five million. The Venn ones were half a million, sometimes slightly bigger. And put them together, we've got bigger contracts. That's a summary of Open Orphan. Again, look at those wonderful, uh, very large pharma companies. So we're basically a quarter of very substantial pharma companies. And again, our friends, those wonderful companies, Mark, Gilead, these are household names. Virtually all of them are vaccine companies. So hopefully you'll understand why I'm so excited. I said acquiring HVIVO was uh, the second best thing I did in my life. Marrying my wife uh, was 
uh, was probably the best thing because she allows me to go 24 7 in these companies without her i couldn't be putting them together a fabulous pipeline and people scoffed when they saw this early in the year and if you look uh client a rsv challenge 2.4 we end up signing it got it up to 3.2 uh the rsv the second one that's our seven million contract done and the 3.4 is done so the first four on that list is done immediate operational long-term revenues really what we're saying here is that look we've put these companies together we have some fantastic exciting news flow uh how we've put them together uh, without COVID, we have a very profitable, sticky uh, CRO business in our hands. And at least for some of us, our shareholders and ourselves, uh, COVID has been the biggest pain in the ass for the entire world. But uh, it's transformed the VEN business, uh, sorry, uh, it's transformed the HVO business. And it was almost a nobody for 10 years. And suddenly, CEOs of pharma companies, vaccine companies are ringing up the managing team looking to work with us. Really, we're looking to build substantial revenue growth and profitability, and that's our, my mantra. Uh, I've put a lot of my personal cash in this company. Uh, I don't want to see losses. Um, I pay myself 150,000 euros a year, not even starting, and uh, I believe that's well paid as a CEO. Most CEOs are paid the same, and I think we acquire had a business. So basically, I'm focused on cost. I shouldn't say anymore. I should dwell on that. We're focused on profitability. We're focused on paying people a good salary, but trying to contain them. Get back. Um, so look, in summary, we put together two small struggling companies, turned them around, made them profitable, and very importantly, we've expanded the product lines. Uh, I think nobody would have believed HVivo uh, would be offering uh, antibody tests in the UK or laboratory testing, and nobody believed that we could have had potentially 12 of the largest vaccine companies in the world wanted to talk to us. Um, but again, we have a lot to do. Uh, we've done a lot. We've come fast. We've come far ahead. And, uh, and let's see how far we can go. So unless I have to say any more, I think it's time to hand it over for some Q&A. Um, we have had a lot of questions. I mean, quite a lot of them that came in, I think, over the course of your presentation, you then covered them off. So I'll try and skip the ones that I think or I feel that you have covered. But if, um, as a reminder, if you went at the start, the webinar video will be on the Shares Magazine website hopefully in a, in, in a few days. So you can come back through this and try and get those detailed points if we don't cover things um, again for you now. Um, a lot of questions, unsurprisingly, about the, um, the quotient, quotient, field of pronunciation. Um, the machine, um, how many machines have you got? What's there for the capacity for testing? Um, and do you need a, what kind of approvals or, or um, do you need to have, have to test be to submit it to Portland and down for verification? What's the process of becoming, I guess, an approved supplier, or one of a better word, um, and can I get that running? Yeah, look, I think our RNS uh, covered quite a lot of the answers that on Monday, but for the first time in my life, I think, as you know, as an open orphan, my previous company, Amrit Pharma, and before that, um, Fasted, if we had an important RNS, I would uh, shout it out there. I would uh, make people aware of it, I would go and proactive. We'd do a video, I'd go on Vox Markets and do an interview with Justin Waite. But Monday is the first time I've never done that because we really, it's, it's a transformational deal, but we need to let it bed down. However, in the RNS, it said uh, the quotient, um, and it's, it's, it's pronounced quotient, I've only learned that in this last two weeks, even though it's quotient, Q O T I N T, um, it has CE mark, so it's approved for uh, kids all over Europe. It has been confirmed uh, with the European agency that it is 100% accuracy and 99.98 specificity. That's exactly the same accuracy that's all over the UK press today on the Rush machine. Uh, Rush is a monster machine, but they're up there with caution. They're very similar. And uh, it got air freighted in on Monday. It's in our lab today and we're running tests. And the beauty about it is it's almost fully automated. You need a lab like our wonderful virology laboratory. And um, uh, we've said, look, daily capacity is 3,000 tests a day. Uh, and that's, okay, two people can do that. Our lab normally has a robotic uh, diagnostic kit that runs 24 seven. We don't need to hire a ton more people. We're gonna open up the channel partners, uh, the UK uh, GP networks, and some of the health clinics for the city. 
um, and we think uh, 3,000 is a good starting point. That's 21,000 tests a week we can do, and that's basically a million tests a year. Basically, we can it's it's modular. If we hit capacity, we can take another machine on and bolt it on beside it. So let's go with 3,000 tests a day first. And so you feel as though you have the infrastructure and resources in place to maximise the the opportunity that that machine offers you. Absolutely. And look, we genuinely have done no PR. We talked it down. We want to get the machine in, bedded in and working. But it is up there, the same everything that the Rush machine equal. Uh, but you will hear a lot more of us in two weeks. As we're, as we're up and running, we just want to make sure it's in the laboratory. And as of now, the, some of the team are working on it. Uh, but it's a very simple machine. It's robotic. It does need the facility we have. It needs to go into viral laboratory. It needs to have a viral laboratory with all that bells and whistles that we have. So it was actually it was one of those opportunities that, that uh, it suited them and, and certainly suited us. I've had a lot of questions again about this, and I'll try and do it in just one. Um, and it's about, kind of, I guess, the competitive environment. Um, does uh, Roche and you being in the UK market simultaneously to have any have a negative impact on, on, on the opportunity for you? I mean, I, I'd assume not. Plenty of tests need to be taken, but um, please comment about that. Does that impact your opportunity? No, I think, look, we, we all know, uh, I think every listener tonight would be very happy giving 100 euros or 100 pounds or 150 to do a blood draw and tell me have I antibodies or not. Um, so, look, uh, the entire EU market, virtually every in the UK, will want, not once, twice, will want to get antibody testing. Look, where we fell behind uh, in the UK, our bloody Germans have been testing and have the kit in place. Britain is only catching up. There's room for lots of us. Uh, I don't know what about you, but I know in London, the city, all the big banks want to test their staff every second week for antibodies. Once you've confirmed, and bear in mind uh, COVID-19, the vast bulk of people who get it don't even know they have it. But the one benefit is you have antibodies. So no, I think, look, uh, we're not saying this is the most wonderful long-term business, uh, but certainly we are very happy to help provide antibody testing. We know uh, Britain has struggled to try to send out the pinprick uh, little uh, kit, you puncture your finger, tiny bit of blood. Uh, the belief is if you want to know 100% certainty, you must do a blood draw. That's pulled three ounces out of your arm, it's done by your, in your GP and it's sent to us and we will give you, or Roche will do as well, they have absolutely fabulous capability, but it has to be laboratory Test, test testing. It can't be your little pregnancy kit at home where you just put put something on a stick and uh, work. Other things can be 100% accuracy on pinpricks, but not um, COVID-19 antibodies. We um, thinking back to when you first floated uh, the company and first presented Open Orphan, and um, you're very clear about the, um, I guess, the exit strategy and your your uh, ambitions to. Um, exit relatively swiftly and not to be around for a long time. Now the world has changed somewhat. Is that still the case? Do you still have the same ambitions to to kind of exit, get out quickly, to sell the business uh, in, in some form, or do you now think there's a great opportunity to try and develop something? Yeah, look, I've always said, and I use the word exit to kind of focus people's minds. People, the problem about trying to move very fast, you've got to get everybody else moving fast and if you don't move, we'll sell you as the attitude. Yeah, look, that strategy hasn't gone away. Uh, however, um, there's a, our share price has doubled, we went from 34 million to 50 or 60 million in recent weeks. If we deliver even a fraction that we're talking about, we're going to have a company of very substantial value by the turn of the year. Uh, I say everything, and this is why I say extra, a lot of the management teams and small cap AM companies say, my company, this is my company. It is not their company. This is not my company. It's a shareholder's company. So we're going to keep very decent daily liquidity. We love that investors can buy in. We're not Hotel California, like a lot of AM companies. You can you, easy, you buy the shares, but you can't sell them. There's no liquidity. We set a target day one. We'd have £100,000 sterling every day. Then we pushed up, could we get half a million a day? And now we've nearly a million most days trading. So that allows investors to make some profit, to trade in and come back again and go. So the exit strategy never goes away. It's a great way of focusing people's minds. However, um, if we're looking at the trajectory on, we might have a business worth many hundreds of millions. So why would we give that away? So 
reviewed every six months. At the moment, uh, we have a lot more to do in the next six months, and uh, we might have a, we have a business today that you wouldn't have recognised three months ago. Uh, and hopefully, in three months' time, with a business, we'll be even more unrecognisable. Uh, but what I'd say to people, we don't want people going wild. I did say on our presentation Monday evening that we are a services company. We do not want to see our share price doubling, tripling, quadrupling. We'd like to see the share price gently easing up with positive news flow. Let us get our quotient antibody testing up and running. And then Monday week or Tuesday week, uh, when we announce we're open for business and doing tests at 100% accuracy, uh, then that's reasons to push the share price ahead again. And the other kind of theme has been about acquisition. Now, when you bought um, Venn and HVivo, um, they were you know, kind of somewhat distressed, shall we say. Um, are there still distressed opportunities out there? Um, would you have ambition to, to uh, buy any one or, or, or any other companies to complement what your uh, portfolio currently achieves? You know, look, good question. No, I think that when we bought with HVivo, we kind of knew what we got with Venn. We kind of had an understanding of it. Uh, but with HVivo, it's like a treasure trove. If you think about it, uh, this was a couple hundred million. We picked it up for 13. But look, it's a lot of that, it's hard to spend 113 million without producing some good. So there's 113 million of real shareholder value poured into HVivo. Uh, but there's some fabulous assets. Look, we have a series now of a really profitable, fast growing services business. But with this whole bunch of products, the uh, which don't sit, you don't, you can't mix apples or oranges. Products, i.e., the development of the universal flu vaccine, the mosquito vaccine, and the immune modulator, should be in a separate company. So, our first job is: can we monetize those on behalf of all shareholders? And our plan would be that'll keep us busy. So, no, I don't see us doing any more acquisition. We, we've acquired enough uh, to basically uh, work our way through in the next six months. Uh, if we're still around in springtime, yeah, that's the time we'd look at uh, doing something exciting. But between now and Christmas, if we deliver a fraction of what we hope to do, uh, we'll be in a very different place by Christmas. Um, I said a, a comment here, um, and um, someone asking me to pass on their thanks um, for uh, continuing to listen to kind of the concerns of private investors and being open and, uh, I guess, responsive to individual investors and to keeping those. Uh, to keeping those investors updated and abreast of the company, I think it's um, appreciated um, by us as uh, by us as well. Um, but we have uh, run out of time. Uh